Ulu comes from the Inuktitut language, <laughs> which I like, um, which is spoken by Inuit, and it literally means woman's knife. They were traditionally used for skinning, food preparation. Apparently you can cut hair with it if you hold it down and sort of scrape it. And also something called flensing, which is another fantastic word, isn't it? Which means basically scraping fat or blubber off. You'd have your bit of meat and you'd, you'd sort of hold it and scrape it up and down like that. Get the blubber off. Um, they date back to four to 5,000 years, depending on what source. I'm using the Canadian National Museum, so I guess they probably know what they're talking about, don't they? There's no sort of standardised designers with any fairly primitive tool. There's, there, there were regional and tribal variations, but essentially the same. They're now really, really popular by stainless steel ones. They're really popular as a, as a general purpose kitchen knife, and they are actually really, really good at that task. Originally, they were made of slate, shale or quartzite, and handle of bone, ivory or wood, as in this case. And they had a huge cultural importance. Um, Lady Eskimos may have had the same one for life or for much of their lives. And in death, they were thought to retain part of the owner's energy. And in fact, the Arctic Winter Games actually give out bronze, silver and gold ulus for winners. <laughs> this one uh, I made out of a piece of roof tile and a bit of walking stick and it's very, very easy to make. So I've marked up the basic shape and I'm going to cut it out with a hacksaw because it just works better than my Dremel. So that's the basic shape. Took about 20 minutes. Needs a bit of tidying up, but we're definitely getting there. So that's the kind of shape I want to end up with. And again, it's going to be sanded just because it's basically quicker and far easier. And that is the basic shape. Put a handle on it, sharpen it, and we've got slate ulu. It really is that simple. Right, for the handle, I'm going to use this old piece of walking stick because it's got a bit of character to it. And it'll be roughly that long. That long, even, so you can see it. There we go. So that's the basic little handle. What we're going to do now is just mark a line down there, drill it, clear this little channel out, and stick the slate blade in. And as you've noticed, I've had the Mora knife out to do it as well. So that's the handle. Obviously, this would have been bone in the real thing, but I'm fresh out of bone. That slips in there. We glued. You can, if you're really, really, really looking at a decent replica, drill through here and drill through here and kind of lash it together, but this is going to be glued. And as if by magic, it suddenly started raining again. So let's go inside. Right, final quick look. That's all glued together. We'll leave that till, what, probably tomorrow morning, frankly, to make sure it's bonded properly. And then make it look a bit nicer as well. It's evening, so we're in the kitchen, which is doubling up as a workshop at the moment. I've soaked this for a couple of hours in boiled linseed oil and just look at that finish. It is, I think that's absolutely fabulous. If you've got anything with a slate, anything made of slate, wipe a bottle of boiled linseed oil over it. It really does look good. It also hardens the wood quite a lot. So I'm going to try sharpening it. I'm going to sharpen it the same way you'd sharpen any knife with a, a, a sharpening stone which is just going to do lots of actions like that. It may take some time. And if you're going to do this, anything with slate indoors, just be advised, it makes a hideous amount of dust. The dust that came off this when I was cutting it, I was, I was really, really surprised. It's about three times as much as you think, and it gets everywhere. It's very, very fine. It's like dropping a bottle of talcum powder. So, sharpening. 25 minutes sharpening, 10 minutes tidying up, and we've now got an edge on the ulu. This, this, I, you know, seriously, if you've got an hour or two to spare, make an ulu. They are, it's great fun, and it's very effective as a as a knife. We'll see how.
The closest I could find to whale or seal meat was this piece of cheap steak. It's red meat though, so it's pretty much the same. Let's see how it performs against this. Yeah. It always surprises me how well stone tools actually do work. So yeah, that's not too bad. We can try it also with some vegetables. Bit of chilli. There's a making of a good dish in this, isn't there? I mean, you can see really why they're getting quite popular as sort of modern day kitchen tools. Piece of tomato. All right, not quite so good. I'm going to stain the steel ones, obviously, going to be better. But for a very primitive tool that I made in about an hour and a half. 